Don Lynch gets banned from TikTok. I think I'm saying fam name right. So the reason he was banned is because of his facial expressions and duetting of people's videos and people seeing it as bullying and harassment. So this thing is big on TikTok. I got over 1.2 million followers on TikTok. So I'm like a part of the platform. So I feel like I, you know, I'm a part of what's going on on this platform because it impacts the world. It impacts the music industry. Anything that goes on TikTok impacts like our world in a huge way we've seen it with the trump rally you know they made his rally flop by reserving a bunch of seats we see artists you know going to like chart number one on tiktok or trend and then they chart on spotify and billboard just because they chart on tiktok so tiktok is a powerful app and this thing is catching headlines you know i've been all over the news because of um, my tiktok success and everything you could just google trey little tiktok but I'm here to talk about Donnelly. So there's been this fight going on TikTok of saying, you know, he shouldn't have got banned. All he did was do at videos. Like, it's not a big deal. Bring him back. And there's people saying, you know, he's sent people to harass and bully me. So keep him banned. He don't deserve to be on this platform. So I'm about to react to this Good Morning America news clip. And I'm going to share my thoughts and opinions on this. So um, I'm going to break it down for y'all. So stick around. Hit that like button. And make sure you subscribe. I'm dropping multiple videos a day. Let's get it. Turning now to how to deal with social media harassment. The issue spreading across multiple platforms, including the popular app TikTok. It's a story we first saw in the New York Times. And Kaylee Hartung joins us with the new big question people are asking. Are influencers responsible for their followers' behavior? It's a big debate. Kaylee, good morning. It is. Good morning, Wit. You know, some of these TikTok influencers have massive followings. We are talking about millions of fans who want to join in the conversation that's created in the comment section of each post. But when those conversations turn ugly, it's a new form of bullying online. So look, TikTok's known for singing. In Here, let me mute that because I ain't trying to get a uh, copyright strike. So they're just showing some of the videos that uh, Don Lynch, like reacting to people and stuff like that. So look, his face goes to um, normal after he sees someone transition, specifically people who are transgender. Like if they transition from um, so people clothes that are seen to be normal or accepted in society, and then they go from like, boom, I look like a guy, now I look like a woman. And his face goes from to, and I get it. Like he's showing a shocked face, like it caught him off guard. But then the thing is, if you're duetting these videos, it really don't catch you off guard because you've seen it before. So I think he's saying like, oh, this would have caught me off guard. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of his followers see it for the first time and they're like, whoa, that did catch me off guard. You know what I mean? Because some videos like you would not expect like people to transition and look like a complete different person. So I think there is some sort of shock value. And I think people will take pride like, hey, you know, this is how I look. And then after I put, you know, my hair and makeup on like, I look like um, like this image that I attain to be. And I think people take pride in that. Like, look, I, this is my glow up, you know? Like, it's considered a glow up. But I feel like when Don Lich react to this stuff, it's and it's like, whoa. It's like, yeah, there might be a certain, like, shock value or something unexpected that came. You might not expect that, especially with TikTok videos being so short. You're like, whoa. But at the same time... I don't know if it's because I'm older, but you have to understand that, you know, you have to make sure that you're being respectable of people in their in their life, you know, especially if they don't have the same, if someone have a different lifestyle than you or different values, like you have to make sure you're being respectful. We're in America, um, people are protected and, you know, like you can't just say anything about them. You know what I mean? Yeah, we got freedom of speech and stuff like that. But you have to be careful to make sure that you expressing like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there was a shock factor to that. But you can't be disrespectful about it because people take bullying and harassment serious. And people, you know, who get reacted to like that might feel like, wow, like you shocked that I transitioned or that. I, you know what I mean? So it's like. And the reason I understand, just a little bit of context, um, I have people in my family who are transgender. I have, um, you know, people who cross dress in my family. And I'm going to break that down, you know, as we get into this video. So it's like, I'm, I'm used to it. You know what I mean? It's not really a shock. You know what I mean? I'm not like, oh my gosh. You know what I mean? Sometimes you're like, dang, I didn't expect um, somebody who looks like this to transition and look like that. And it might not always be a negative thing. You know what I mean? Or it might not be a negative thing, but... 
if you're reacting to it in a way that's like, oh, wow, you look cool the way you are with jeans and long hair and some and a masculine figure. And then when you transition, it's like, oh, my gosh, like that can be seen as like um, as negative, you know, and I can see I'm not saying, oh, Donna should have been banned, but I'm just expressing like. This is something that I've been familiar with all my life since I was a kid, so I can understand how this would be offensive. So I'm going to break it down for y'all. Keep watching. Don't close off the video and get mad because I'm going to break it down. People like calling me slurs, saying that they wanted to kill me. The duet feature allows one user to react to another user's content. Seth and Madeline. Man, I ain't trying to get a copyright strike, man. Or Ryan, when Chris started sharing his reactions to their posts with his. They got all this music here. So look, that's the uh, that's when they were kids, and then they transition. Chris doesn't speak. The harassing in the comment section by his fans. His comments have been filled with death threats, negative messages, hateful comments. Even if he doesn't say anything, he's still allowing for this his huge platform to breed transphobia and homophobia and hate on TikTok. Dog, kids can't spell on TikTok. I swear, man. Did y'all just see how my man spelled believe up there? It was like B-E-L-E. I N D E P E. But look, look. TikTok does breed a lot of like man, like a lot of hate, like on some real stuff. I've never seen as much racism in my life. I mean, like, I've seen like racist church people like that I've went to church with and pastors say some flat out just racist, degrading to the human race type thing, right? To the black race, right? But on TikTok, kids will post a video of a of like like it's it's bad. Like literally, like they change their profile picture as a monkey, then call you monkey, they'll say the N word, but then switch the letters, they'll try to trick you up. It's bad. Like the racism on TikTok is horrible. Just the hate in general, like they gang up and then they want you to feel this hate. So it gets to a point sometimes where I don't even read the comments and I just be like, man, whatever, dog. Like, but I can see how this can feel very like, you know, horrifying to someone who already feel like, dang, when I was going to school, I wasn't seen as normal. I probably was picked on. I probably this probably never felt like I fit in. Parents probably didn't accept me or something like that. Then you get on the social media app and you got people ganging up on you and just, Ugh. Like, I be clapping back in my comment section. Like, man, y'all little punk kids, man. But the, the energy on TikTok is real. And, like, you got to have a lot of thick skin and a lot of mental strength to deal with it. Because that junk, and, hey, man, it's like an army. Madeline is transgender. And Seth, who doesn't believe in labels, is usually seen wearing gender non-conforming clothes. It can just be really harmful, especially growing up as a kid. On? When you finally just found a way to express yourself, to just kind of be beaten down completely. TikTok has since shut down at least three of Chris's accounts. But at just 17, he says he meant no harm. Come on, man. They're trying to get my copyright. See, look. So my man's kind of like shocked. Like, whoa. Like, and look. And here's the argument. Dalish could have, it could have been like, dang, like I didn't expect that. I mean, I think if we honest, like you could be like, dang, like I did not expect someone to be able to look that like that that good or like look or make this kind of change like it could have been that right Donish could have been like dang i didn't expect a guy to be able to change it completely look different now that could have been his argument right so just say that was his argument in the comments kids don't know what he meant they're gonna take it and run with it you know what i mean so even if he was like no nah, like i actually appreciated the glow up the change but when it's just the facial expressions People take it for what it is unless you make it clear. Now, listen, I'm very outspoken about racism on TikTok. Very outspoken to the point people try to counsel me all the time because I make people uncomfortable when I talk about racism, right? I make it clear. I don't hate white people. I make it clear. I don't hate all police. I'm not trying to abolish the police. Yes, I'm clear about police reform and uh, defunding, meaning switching funds around, not taking away and abolishing, right? I make it clear where I stand. Now, it's hard if you just put something out there that's very neutral and let people run with it. So listen, I think because he's young, he don't understand the history behind things that are weighty like this. You know what I mean? Look, when I was like 
five, I think that's when I started seeing my granddad, um, who identifies as a woman, um, cross dress when I was a kid, and I was like, oh, okay, like this is my granddad, but you know, he dresses like a woman, and it's hard to tell that he's a guy, right? So I grew up my whole life like that, and then my grandma is the same way, you know, she dresses like a guy, and it is my story is funny. I'll share more about it if people want to know, but they actually got together. They were both uh, intoxicated one night, and they got together, hooked up by accident, and boom, my mom was born out of that. Like, my whole family, like, was born out of, like, you know, like, me and, like, my, my siblings and my kids, like, all born out of that one thing that they seen as a mistake that they never wanted to do again. So, I was raised around my granddad who, you know, looks like a woman to this day. Like, like I said, if y'all want a separate video about that, I can interview my granddad, like, you know, interview my grandma and like solid people love them to death, you know? Um, but I'm used to it. You know, I'm a little older and I understand that, you know, they fought really hard to be accepted in society. You know what I mean? Like I'm married, I got a wife, you know what I mean? So, but at the same time, that don't stop me from being sensitive to, what they go through and and how they're looked at in society when my granddad would drop me off to school, the way people looked at him. I got teased. I had to knock people out because of the way that they was talking crazy about me and my, my granddad. You know what I mean? Like, and I think when you're young on this platform and you got a lot of followers, we have to understand that everything we do and say comes with weight. Like, we have to understand our responsibility. I've said some stuff sometimes, and I'm like, shoot, man, I probably shouldn't have said that. I probably shouldn't have did that. And when you young, when you, like, under your 20s or you 19, 16 or whatever, and you got a lot of followers, you don't understand the weight that comes with it. And you just, like, you got to understand that you just can't get on social media and do that stuff. Now, if you feel a certain way about people who are transgender, um, just don't react to their videos. Keep scrolling. You got to understand that if you want the smoke, if you want to start the beef, then they're going to come for your head and you got to be ready for it. You got to understand that. I told myself, if I make videos about racism, all the races going to come for me. And guess what? They did. I be getting death threats. They be trying to find my address. They be trying to inbox me everywhere saying they're going to find me. They're going to do this. You got to understand. And this is something that I'm willing to stand on. Now, if you being someone who, who say I'm against people who are transgender, you got to be willing to take the heat. You got to be willing to. Now, if you don't mean it like that, you have to be clear. When I do at these videos... This is what I mean. You have to be clear. Listen, all I'm saying is that, listen, he young, cool looking dude. You know what I mean? But like, you have to understand the weight that comes with it, bro, with the platform. You have to, bro. You on Good Morning America, which is one of the, the biggest news outlets. You have to understand, listen, you know, if I do this, this can't happen. And you, and if you, and if you say I'm willing to take the consequences, then don't be surprised when they come for you. That's all I'm saying, man. And like, we just need more people that's that's coaching us on how to deal with internet fame and platforms. Bro got over 2 million followers, they said, before he got deleted. And we don't know if they're going to let him back on. I hope they let him back on. I hope they let him back on. Young black dude, like, of course I would want him to have a platform. He could have been doing anything else, you know what I mean? Like, for young black men, it's, it's, it's tough. Like, we, like, we already got these self-consciousness and, and, you know, like, you know, there's already these stereotypes against us. So when you succeed in any way, you know, I don't know where he's from, but I know the odds that are against him. So I hope he get his platform back and can make his money because he can go out and be doing anything else. You know what I mean? Like, but he's doing the social media thing. So I hope he get it back. I hope he learn. I hope he build relationships um, with the transgender community. And I hope that they that they can forgive him. And that's how I feel about it. Like, I hope he can be forgiven and I hope he can learn and I hope that he can move forward. And I hope these conversations can happen. But at the end of the day, man, like you just like my, my takeaways is you have to be aware of what can happen. And I know some people are saying, oh, they're just being so sensitive. Well, you got to understand if you are not transgender. Like, you don't you can't say, you know, how it feel. I don't know how it feel. But at the same time. That doesn't mean that I have to be insensitive about it. 
That doesn't mean I have to say, oh, they're just being sensitive. Now, I get it. There might be some people that's being sensitive or just complaining about every little thing. But when you think about the whole entire group, if you have a big group mad, if it's not just one or two, three people, if it's an entire community, you have to be willing to hear them out. You know what I mean? Like if it's, you know, if it's a couple people, but if you're seeing this as a big problem, you have to be willing to to talk about this in dialogue. And that's the mature thing to do. And like I said, with people being so young and having these huge platforms, they don't know the consequences that come with. I've been doing music all my life and I've had time to adapt. I've been in the limelight since I was a teenager on stage, 30,000 people, 10,000 people, all the videos on my Instagram, YouTube, y'all can see it for yourself. So I know how to get on the radio and not just get on there and say some junk that's going to get me canceled. You know what I mean? Like at the same time, I don't hold my punches and I'm very outspoken about stuff I believe in. But at the end of the day, man, y'all have to understand that like people have feelings, people have different experiences in life. I just don't know why it's so hard to understand that because I'm a straight male. Why would it be hard for why would I say Oh, y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Y'all too sensitive. Y'all don't feel this way. Y'all don't feel like y'all being harassed. How would I know that? Who am I to say I know how people feel? So all I'm saying, listen. If you want to have an argument or conversation, call people on the phone, FaceTime. I call. I done called a couple famous TikTokers. I'm friends with a couple of them. I done FaceTime. I done DM. Do that. Don't get on the public and start arguing and fighting back and forth because y'all throwing y'all careers on the line. Have a private conversation if you really want to learn from somebody. Call them up, DM them, FaceTime them. But when you do stuff publicly in the limelight like that, man, it's going to get ugly. If I got a problem with a big creator and not, or if I have a certain thing or some questions, I either avoid that person or I ask that. But you, you started this, to be honest, bro. You started looking at their videos, duetting it. If you ain't want these problems, just... Let them have their life. Let them be on the platform. Let them be free. Let them do what they want to do. Now, if somebody's like not hurting nobody, if they're not taking somebody's life or whatever, that's then like if there if it's a threat to somebody else, then that's different. But if people are just on an app to have fun, just let people be. Let people create. Let people. The reason I go at racist people is because they're spewing hate. That's a way different situation than. Getting on here and, and, and making people feel uncomfortable doing this and doing that. That's all I'm saying. Like I said, I want Don Lich to come back. I support him being back on the app. I hope that he can learn. I hope that he can. Like, he already got the apology video right here. And like, I would never want anybody to be canceled like that, you know. Um, at least without having a chance to learn. But I'm not going to make this video too long, y'all. If y'all got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Let's talk about it.